Good morning, everyone. We're very sorry for the delay. We have had multiple technical issues. And for those of you who are not able to get on and see the slides, we will be recording this entire webinar and send it to everyone who signed up for the original one. This is Mihira Kara. Good morning, afternoon, evening, depending on where you are. I'm the Chief of the Research, Technology, and Utilization Division in the Office of Population and Reproductive Health at USAID in Washington. You are here for the Fertility Awareness Webinar. This is sponsored by USAID through the FACT Project, the Fertility Awareness for Community Transformation Project, implemented by IRH with several partners. Save the Children, Tear, uh, no, Save the Children, ICRW, the Population Media Center, amongst others, because there are lots of local partners in the countries they work in. As a brief background, USAID has been supporting fertility awareness and fertility awareness based methods since the mid 1980s. In fact, through our efforts, we develop the standard days method, the two-day method, the lactational amenorrhea method, all of which are now in multiple programs around the world. In addition to these methods, we learned over time that the whole idea, the concept of fertility awareness is critical for multiple behaviors, including the uptake of contraceptive methods and family planning. And this is a con complex concept and we have been in the process of trying to understand the various aspects of fertility awareness and how to get this knowledge out there en masse to people around the world, both men, women, and young people. So our focus more recently has been on understanding the complexity of this concept, simplifying it, and trying to also understand the relationship between fertility awareness and behaviors such as contraceptive use, sexual debut, and other important behaviors, especially for very young people. So our hypothesis currently is that fertility, improving fertility awareness also increases family planning use, improves the idea of delayed sexual debut, and improves menstrual hygiene. And we have multiple studies on in the works to try to answer these questions. With that, I will turn it over to the presenters today, who will be Lauren Van Enk, Marie Mukabatsinda from Rwanda, and Esther Spindler, all from IRH, as well as Gabby Wynn from Save the Children. At the end of their presentations, we will have time for questions and answers. At, the, at any point during the webinar, please share your questions via the chat box if you have been able to get on, or email them to Lauren Van Inc. at IRH, and we will respond at the end. If not today, we'll try to answer those questions by email to everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Mihira. My name is Lauren Van Inc, and I'm a program officer at IRH working on the FACT project. The FACT project started where a lot of family planning programs start, seeking to reduce unmet need. Many women want to avoid pregnancy, but are not using a modern method of family planning. According to demographic and health survey data, women who say they want to delay their next pregnancy but are not using a method are asked why. Three key reasons emerge. The first reason is misconceptions of pregnancy risk, where women report either infrequent sex or postpartum breastfeeding as reasons for non-use. The second reason is opposition, 
And finally, side effects are the most commonly reported reason for non-use among married women. Our formative research confirmed these major drivers of non-use. An illustrative example of this misunderstanding of risk of pregnancy comes from the Karamoja region in Uganda. Pregnancy rates in Karamoja are among the highest in Uganda and use of family planning methods, the lowest. Formative research helped us understand the community's beliefs about fertility and risk of pregnancy. The experience of this young woman shows she was not aware of her risk of pregnancy from a single act of intercourse. An example of the second main driver of unmet need, opposition, comes from our formative research in Nepal, where seasonal migration of men is very common. Women spend several months at a time without their husbands and often discontinue using family planning to avoid stigma in the community. And finally, this quote from a woman in Uganda shows how common side effects like irregular bleeding can evolve into a more dramatic myth related to paralysis in her newborn child. Stigma and taboos cast a shadow over all of these barriers. Given the taboos surrounding communication about sex, many find it uncomfortable to discuss fertility and reproductive health with a partner or peers. We see women and men all around the world having no conversation about reproductive health, puberty, or how their bodies work. Sometimes when this conversation does occur, it happens too late. And frequently the conversation is saturated with misinformation. We believe fertility awareness is a missing link. But what do we mean when we say fertility awareness? The definition used by the FACT Project is actionable information about female and male fertility throughout the life course and an understanding of how this knowledge applies to one's own circumstances and needs. This can include information about onset of fertility, the menstrual cycle, knowledge of pregnancy risk, or postpartum fertility. And there are many messages that can be conveyed. For example, in the case of knowledge of pregnancy risk, one message might be, between one menstrual period and the next, a woman has several days in a row when she's able to become pregnant. We hypothesized that fertility awareness was one important element in the decision-making process for family planning use, as demonstrated by this behavior change model. The model helps to convey visually the numerous factors affecting someone's decision to use family planning. Social and behavior change interventions aimed at increasing demand for family planning often target multiple factors seen on the left side of the model, like awareness, attitudes, and self-efficacy. One factor that is rarely given attention is fertility awareness. Fertility awareness works in concert with norms, attitudes, and more to create a supportive environment for uptake of family planning. Social and behavior change interventions require more than just knowledge to work well. Solutions that include fertility awareness can create impact by improving people's awareness of how their bodies work, catalyzing community conversations around taboo topics, moving these ideas from the shadows into the light. They can also offer the opportunity to challenge fertility and family planning norms in a group setting and through modeling. And finally, they can encourage linkages with health services so that people can act on the new ideas that are being discussed. Fertility awareness can be integrated into a variety of platforms across different development sectors. 
Using principles of human-centered design, the FAG project set out to develop and test social and behavior change solutions that would improve fertility awareness among youth, postpartum women, and couples wishing to delay their next pregnancy, with the ultimate goal of improving family planning use. This exploration phase led us to select a radio drama, community theater, and games as the platforms. The approach and messages were contextualized with community participation. In a moment, you'll hear about these three experiences. But first, what did we learn? It's important to state up front that our research results provided rich data and learning. First, we saw that these social and behavior change solutions improved fertility awareness. Second, using innovative and participatory activities to share fertility awareness can be both feasible and acceptable in the community in spite of taboos. Games and storytelling are critical in catalyzing conversation. And fertility awareness activities created a more supportive environment for family planning by improving attitudes, norms, self-efficacy, and communication. Fertility awareness was positively associated with family planning use and intention to use, even after controlling for demographic variables. And finally, fertility awareness activities can be easily integrated into a wide variety of programs. As my colleagues describe the interventions, they will share a snapshot of research results that convey each of these lessons. For those of you interested in further detail, results, briefs, and evaluation reports will be available. Now, I'd like to turn it over to Marie to lead us on a journey to Rwanda. Hi, everyone. My name is Marie Mukabatsinda, working for the Institute for Reproductive Health in Rwanda as a country representative. In the, today's presentation, I will share with you our experience with the integration of fertility awareness and family planning in a serial radio drama called Ima Noni Mamba, which means a gift for today that lasts for a long time. Rwanda is a small country in the heart of Africa. It lies between DRC, Burundi, and Uganda. We are known as the land of thousand hills. Did you know that Rwanda is one of the most densely populated countries in the world? Rwanda has had a strong family planning program since the early 2000s. The fertility rate declined rapidly in that time, but unmet need remains high. Fear of side effects and lack of postpartum family planning contribute to non-use. Barriers to family planning uptake are often related to social and attitudinal barriers rather than access to services. Why focus on fertility awareness through a radio drama? Despite the progress in family planning, there are gaps in fertility awareness, particularly one's ability to accurately assess pregnancy risk. This is especially true for adolescents who have limited access to information or tailored programs addressing their health. We determined that uh, a radio drama was the best platform to increase fertility awareness. The Rwandan terrain is difficult to travel, but there is nearly nationwide access to radio. Radio is very popular in Rwanda, making it a logical medium for disseminating information countrywide. As a country, 
We speak one unified language, Kinyarwanda, making the messages easily understandable in each corner of the country. Impa Anonima Amba Radio Drama was developed by Population Media Center and Expert Radio and Television Dramas. The drama ran for 100 full episodes over one year across all of Rwanda. It included a variety of subjects such as HIV AIDS, gender-based violence, maternal and health, maternal and child health, sorry, and uh, family planning and reproductive health. IRIH worked with script writers to integrate fertility awareness into the family planning and uh, reproductive health storylines. The drama was assessed using a post-intervention survey and we compared the listeners of the radio drama with non-listeners. We also conducted focus group with listeners to gather qualitative data. The drama is based on the Sabido methodology, which uses transitional characters that model the tension between positive and negative choices. The Sabido methodology is a proven theory-based approach to social and behavior change communication. The stories included positive, negative, and transitional characters, and the realistic consequences of different decisions were shown. The transitional character was the one of most likely to encourage behavior change. As the drama unfolds, the characters develop over time and learn from their experiences. How does the radio drama address misunderstanding of pregnancy risk? First, fertility awareness is woven into the storylines of the transitional characters. They were four main storylines in the radio drama featuring Ketia with the theme of youth reproductive health, Pachenga with family planning, Kagaju with maternal child health, and Sifa with gender-based violence. The audience helps how fertility awareness affects the lives of these characters and understand the consequences of misinformation. Messages are then reinforced with epilogues after the broadcasts, and information is also provided about health service availability. Radio has a wide reach, but it is a low touch intervention. Therefore, transmedia elements are important for critical reflection and discussion with family and friends. Listeners group were established with existing community groups so that listeners could hear the drama together, discuss the event, and ask questions. Many lessons were learned during the FACT project. The first is that social and behavior change solutions like a serial radio drama can improve fertility awareness among listeners. In Rwanda, we defined listeners as respondents who reported listening to the radio drama at least once a week, and we compared the listeners and non-listeners across several indicators. You can see on the slide several indicators of fertility awareness. Listeners of the radio drama were more likely than non-listeners to know this information. This young listeners explain new information that she learned from the radio drama, which will help her in future decision making. Now, I invite my colleagues to tell you about some of their experiences in Uganda and Nepal. Thank you for very much. For this portion of the webinar, um, I'll actually be taking you to Uganda, where we tested and evaluated Idian, 
a peer learning and community theater model to increase fertility awareness and family planning use among young community members in Karamoja. Uh, I'd like to start with the story of the Karamojang people. Um, for centuries, the Karamojang have lived as nomadic communities, moving and flowing within the region of what is now known as the Ugandan Kenyan border. Um, Karamojang presence actually dates back in the region um, all the way back in the 1400s, or that is even before the redrawing of borders um, during the colonial scramble for Africa. As a nomadic agro-pastoralist society, cattle is really central to the Karamojang way of life. And under this animal-centric economy, men would often migrate to cattle crawls. Um, by cattle crawls, I mean mobile livestock camps, essentially, for extended periods of time um, to care for their cattle. Our formative research found that couples often use this time as a postpartum abstinence period after the birth of a child. And so it is still said today that couples can only have children again once the child can walk and hold a stick. So research shows that the Karamojang are also experiencing significant societal transitions as a result of a series of external factors and internal factors, including a, go a government disarmament campaigns, seasonal volatility, and growing agrarian use of land that was traditionally used for pasture. Um, so all of these changes have really led to increased food insecurity and unstable livelihoods in the region. And so to date, um, Karamoja has per is perhaps the most socially and economically marginalized region of Uganda with some of the lowest human development indicators in the country. Um, and even for instance, our baseline study findings show that about eight in 10 survey Karamojang had never attended school. Um, and as you can see here, some of those family planning statistics are also alarming. Um, so to date, um, Karamojang women um, on average have eight children um, and less than one in 10 women are using a modern method of family planning. So while there's been some research on the impact of Karamojang's transition on livelihoods in the region, uh, less is known about the effect of those changes around social and familial dynamics and specifically sexual and productive health. Um, and we really set out to find out more in 2014 through formative research. Um, and we learned, we learned through that research um, that the Karamojang transition uh, was really altering those couple dynamics around family planning and negotiation. And so specifically, couples shared with us that they were having a harder time discussing and negotiating postpartum child spacing since those men were no longer going to those mobile cattle crawls in between the births of children. And so you see here some of our other formative research findings and some other barriers that we identified, including myths and misconceptions about family planning, some of which Lauren mentioned earlier, um, and very, very low awareness of modern family planning methods. At the same time, we also learned of other potential entryways and opportunities. Uh, we learned that young men and women value the importance of child spacing already, and they were already practicing child spacing, but they just wanted to learn other ways or having other tools, um, including learning about modern family planning methods to continue their child spacing practices. Community members also told us that they were open and willing to learn about other tools and information about, about modern family planning if it were done through song and drama, both of which um, were part or are part of the oral traditions of the Karamanjang people. And so it was really from this formative research that Adian was designed and born. Um, and I should say that for those of you who are curious, the name Adian comes from a longer Karamanjang version of what's translated to let's come together to strengthen child spacing. So Adian was piloted between 2016 and 2017 as a six month peer learning com and community theater intervention in six catchment areas covering about 15 villages um, Adion was specifically implemented through Save the Children's Early Childhood and Development Care Centers, or ECCD platforms. Uh, these ECCD centers were chosen since they were providing caregiving and early education services for children in these communities. So the idea was to use these centers as a mobilization platform for young parents of children attending those centers, with the hopes that those young parents would then attend performances at those ECCD centers. Uh, for our evaluation design, we really wanted to not just understand the effectiveness of the model, but since it was a pilot, we also wanted to understand the feasibility, potential scalability, and acceptability of the model on increasing fertility awareness and family planning use. And so we did this through a quasi-experimental experimental study 
Uh, so systematically assigning intervention and control communities serviced by these ECCB centers I just mentioned. Um, our methods included surveys with 400 intervention and 200 control households of those communities at baseline, and again six months later at end line. Uh, we also conducted significant qualitative research, including focus group discussions with peer group members, um, community members, um, and other stakeholders, um, and key informant interviews with leaders and service providers. And finally, we um, conducted systematic observations of meetings, rehearsals, and performances to better understand messaging fidelity receipts um, and feasibility. So about the ADN mechanics or, comp or components, um, essentially in each community, 10 male and female youths um, aged 18 to 25 years old were chosen by the ECCD team and parents of children attending those centers to become peer group members and participate in what would be later peer group meetings, rehearsals, and performances. Then those peer group members then chose a male and female pair of peer moderators who are usually 18 to 30 years old, who would then lead them through a series of gender synchronized peer group meetings, rehearsals and performances. Um, after this community selection process, that pair of peer moderators was then trained by community development officers through two separate trainings on the content. And I'll mention the content in a, a few minutes. Um, in each community, the pair of trained moderators uh, facilitated so those gender synchronized same-sex and mixed-sex peer group meetings, rehearsals, and performances sequentially on one of four topics. And these four topics were identified from formative research and they're here on the screen. Uh, they include couple communication, menstruation, fertility, and finally family planning. So after each sequence of peer group meeting and rehearsal, those peer group members then acted out moderated performances on each topic to share information and spark reflection about the content among the community at large. And these dialogues that were usually moderated by the peer moderator were really centered on deconstructing norms and beliefs around fertility awareness, menstruation, family planning, um, and diffusing this accurate knowledge throughout their community. And I should mention that while peer learning and community theater were at the core of the model, we also had other really important community engagement activities uh, with both community leaders and service providers to ensure community acceptability and proper linkages to health services, respectively. Um, so as a low resource context, ADEON was purposely designed with little materials or props, and you can see some of these here in the screen. Um, the ADEON materials were uh, based on robust pre-testing and are really now ready for further adaptation and use, hopefully by some of you in the audience today. Um, and these materials include a facilitator manual on the left that highlights steps for organizing and facilitating some of these meetings, rehearsals, and performances, um, activity cards, um, and reminder cards, as well as visual poster aids. And we have other resources that we can share um, by request. So while we have many, um, many interesting findings and results I'd love to share with you today, I have hopefully just about two minutes left. Um, and given Karamoja's context, I really would like to emphasize instead what we learned about feasibility and acceptability here. Uh, when we first started working in Karamoja four years ago, many people just really told us to go home and not really bother. Um, so for us, a huge su success story is really gaining access to the community and doing this in the first place. And so what we learned is that after very thoughtful, formative research, pre-testing and designing, and especially the hard work of many people in Karamoja, is that sensitive topics around fertility awareness, sex, and family planning were in fact feasible to deliver by non-health youth agents, and not only that, but also acceptable among those communities at large. And so here you can see two reactions our observers captured um, right after performances. That really highlights the positive reception and acceptability of the performances. So the one on the left, on one hand, emphasizes the importance of this information for the context and the food security outcomes of the region while the other on the right highlights the challenges around couple communication in the region as a result of those social transitions I mentioned, and the importance of viewing the positive communication role modeling during those performances. So as well, um, our endline surveys, survey results showed that while theater and storytelling catalyzed conversations in a new way, we learned that it affected performance viewers in different ways. So in this slide, in the two boxes to the left, you can see that women viewers, for instance, 
were more than seven times more likely than non-women viewers to report community communication about correct fertility awareness and family planning messaging. And this association was especially strong for female viewers rather than male viewers who you see on the right of that box, um, who were about four times more likely to communicate with others than male non-viewers. On the other hand, if you move towards the right, while women who viewed those ADN performances were three times more likely to seek, to seek um, health information from a health worker, um, men's associations were significantly and impressively stronger. Um, so men who viewed those performances were 14 times more likely to seek this information relative to men who did not view those performances. So you can see here that people took that information and used it in different ways, even though it still had an impact in those different populations. Um, so what? So overall, the ADN lessons show that community theater can help catalyze new conversations about fertility and family planning and set a new norm to discuss these topics openly, especially in communities like Karamoja, a region that has very little access to health and education services. And so for those interested in learning more about ADN, please check out the resources at the end of the presentation. And um, I'd like to thank you for your time and I'll hand it over to Gabby who will take you away to Nepal. Hi, my name is Gabby Nguyen and I'm from Save the Children. Today I will be presenting on Pragati, a package of nine interactive games developed and tested in five districts of Nepal under the FACT project. Before I begin, I just wanted to take a moment to acknowledge and thank our Save the Children Nepal team, who worked tirelessly across our five districts in the midst of earthquake recovery and government restructuring over the past four years, and the many individuals we worked with on the project from the government of Nepal and here at NDC at IRH and Save US. So Nepal is a small but incredibly diverse country. The landscape ranges from tropical grasslands and clay-rich swamps along the southern border to some of the world's highest peaks. Communities in Nepal are just as diverse in language, religions, and cultural norms. Many populations in Nepal are marginalized because they are geographically or socially disconnected. In rural areas, communities have strong social and gender norms that dictate how people behave. Preference for sons means families have many children to so have multiple sons, and early marriage is common. At the same time, social structures are now changing in Nepal. Many men now migrate to work in other countries, and their wives, sisters, and mothers remain at home becoming household decision makers. For the past decade, Nepal has experienced stagnant changes in CPR and has a high unmet need for family planning meaning people want to prevent or delay the pregnancy but are not using a family planning method. There are many reasons for this high unmet need. Discussing reproductive health is taboo and there are pervasive myths about family planning use. Even when couples begin using a family planning method, discontinuation rates are high due to increasing spousal separation due to the work migration or the misconceptions and concerns about FP method side effects. The FACT project wanted to respond to these barriers by teaching fertility awareness. We also wanted to ensure we could reach youth and marginalized ethnic communities, the populations that experience the highest unmet need in the country. We hoped that teaching fertility awareness in a relevant and fun way could foster couples communication, help overcome taboos, and empower people to talk to one another and health providers about their reproductive health. Through a community engagement approach, we designed Pragati, which means progress. We designed and tested Pragati as a series of interactive games that address fertility awareness, side effects and misconceptions about FP methods, and social and gender norms around FP use. Pragati was implemented in the community by female community health volunteers and select female and male FP champions in our five diverse districts that have different marginalized community groups, different social norms around FP use, and varying levels of access to FP services at health facilities due to challenging geography such as rural and mountainous terrain. We conducted a mixed methods quasi-experimental study to assess the impact of the intervention and uptake and intention to use FP. Participants were recruited across the five districts at baseline and endline. 
complementary qualitative data was collected through 81 focus group discussions and in-depth interviews to describe how fertility awareness information was diffused through their community games and to understand if and how the games influenced decision making and use of FP. There are nine games that are categorized into different categories of games. Those that address fertility awareness, games that provide accurate information about FP methods and side effects, and games that encourage reflection about social norms. In order to encourage diffusion of the messages throughout communities and reflection, we trained a broad group of community volunteers and champions to convene groups in their communities to play the games and encourage reflection about the content in their group sessions. If they were comfortable to do so, we also encouraged our promoters to play the games in mixed sex groups whenever possible to challenge the existing norms that make fertility and FP a women's only issue and encourage more equitable discussions around fertility and reproductive health. Our 15 month pilot testing period taught us a lot about the implementation of these games in the community, which we were able to apply to the development and finalization of materials and guides to support other programmers who are interested in integrating Pragati into their work to address fertility awareness and family planning. As a package, Pragati includes an implementation manual, the Pragati game materials, which include game cards, instruction cards, and chapter cards and various implementation and resource materials to provide guidance on how to conduct supportive supervision and coaching to game promoters. The Pragati pilot intervention testing and evaluation led to two of the key lessons learned under the FACT project. The first was that fertility awareness activities improved determinants of family planning use, including attitudes towards FP, sun preference, and attitudes towards couples communication. Women, those married and unmarried, in communities where Pragati was implemented, were 1.9 times more likely than women in control communities to report positive attitudes toward family planning use, and 1.5 times more likely to view com communication between couples positively. Among married women, those in communities where Pragati was implemented felt 1.4 times less pressure from their families and community to have a son. This quote is just one example of reactions we captured through our qualitative data from participants after having played the Pragati games. Participants, both male and female, were excited to learn new and empowering information about taboo topics in a safe space. They especially appreciated the communal aspects of the games and welcomed the opportunity to have these difficult conversations with their peers. Our next lesson learned was that high individual fertility awareness scores were associated with an uptake in current FP use and intention to use FP. Even after controlling for various demographic variables, in communities where Pragati was implemented, married women with high fertility awareness were 1.7 times more likely to be a current family planning user. In other words, women exposed to the Pragati intervention not only had higher fertility awareness than women who were not exposed, but these women with higher fertility awareness were also more likely to use family planning, a key finding for our original hypothesis. So that concludes my overview of Pragati in Nepal. I'll turn it over to the next presenter. Thank you. Thank you, Gabby, Esther, and Marie. Now you've seen how three very different solutions in three very different contexts can improve fertility awareness and create a more supportive environment for family planning. And you may be thinking, okay, sounds good, but what now? This brings us to our last lesson learned, integration. Fertility awareness activities can be easily integrated into a wide variety of programs. In fact, we're already seeing other organizations take up these activities and integrate them into their own programming. Save the Children has expanded their reach beyond FACT project sites with both Edeon and Pragati. As you can see in this table, 
in Uganda and Nepal, these solutions are being integrated into family planning programs and beyond due to their relevance, feasibility, and acceptability in these communities. For anyone interested in integrating fertility awareness into your programs, we'd like to leave you with a few tips, or what we're calling must-haves. The first is uncover insights about the gender and power dynamics, as well as social norms, stigmas, and misconceptions that are influencing behavior in the community. Before you begin integrating fertility awareness into an intervention, explore those social norms and misconceptions. Agree on how fertility awareness fits into your theory of change. When designing the training content for community facilitators, consider how to help them address social and gender power dynamics in real time. Think about conducting gender-synchronized meetings with women and men together or separately, depending on the context. Second is provide strong support and supervision to ensure correct messaging and comprehension of fertility awareness information. Like any social behavior change intervention tackling taboo topics, ensuring message fidelity is important. Project staff and community facilitators alike should receive an orientation on fertility and family planning. And then provide ongoing coaching to strengthen facilitation skills of community actors. Attention should be given to dispelling common misconceptions. A third tip is identifying points for community critical reflection. Critical reflection occurs when we analyze existing assumptions about a topic through new information or experiences and redefine its meaning for us. The opportunity for critical reflection within a group is important for shifting attitudes and norms around fertility and family planning. Trained facilitators can manage this process through moderated question and answer after theater performances, listener groups that discuss the radio drama, or games that prompt dialogue. This public exchange of ideas stimulates continued conversation and reconsideration of established beliefs. It's also important to ensure strong linkages between the activities and health services, including family planning. Social and behavior change activities aimed at generating demand for family planning need to be paired with strong service delivery to shift behavior from intent to use. When designing the intervention, assess the state of health service provision platforms to decide whether the availability of family planning can meet the increased demand that may result. Invite service providers or CHWs to attend your activities and help answer questions about fertility, body literacy, and family planning. And finally, monitor implementation of your activities and evaluate the change in fertility awareness. Measure any pre and post changes in key indicators around fertility awareness, but also attitudes, self-efficacy, social norms, and family planning use. The FACT project is developing key indicators for fertility awareness to help programs do this better. A number of resources are available and more are coming soon to help you integrate fertility awareness into your programming. We have solution-specific tools like facilitator manuals and game cards, which can be adapted for new contexts. We also have results briefs detailing the evidence behind these interventions. A fertility awareness e-magazine is coming soon, and you can go now to knowyourbod.org to test your fertility awareness IQ. Lastly, check out our YouTube page to see videos of the Edion and Pragati experience. 
We want to thank you for making room in your busy schedules to tune into this webinar. We hope that you now have a better understanding of fertility awareness, its value in cross-sectional programming, and how to begin integrating it into your own program. All right, everyone, thank you so much for joining us for the webinar. Um, for anyone who does have access to the chat box, please go ahead and use that function. Um, I also know that we have quite a few people on the phone, so I would like to give all of you the opportunity to mute yourselves because we are about to unmute you on our side so that anyone wishing to ask a question is free to do so. Okay, we have one question for the team doing Pragati in Nepal. Um, there were quite a few examples of Pragati integration in other programs, and I would like to turn it over to that team to tell us a little bit about what's next for that solution. Hi everyone, this is Sandra from IRH. Um, so regarding Pragati, um, there's a lot of integration that has started um, in Nepal. Um, and uh, we've been working with programs, nutrition programs such, such as um, Swahara, um, uh, which has been implemented by Helen Keller International. Um, and uh, some social marketing organizations have also taken up um, the, some of the Pagati games um, to help with demand generation for their products. Um, so we've been uh, providing some technical assistance to those organizations to be able to uh, scale up the games. Um, at headquarters, we are also working a lot on the um, research uh, studies that has uh, been completed under the project, and we'll be sharing those results soon. We are also working on um, the apps, um, turning the games into apps, um, um, and, and that will be coming out soon as well. Okay, well, we are at the top of the hour now, and I just wanna say thank you to everyone for being patient with our technical difficulties getting started. We did record the entire webinar and it will be freely available for you to share with any colleagues that may have missed. And we will also be sending out links to all the tools and resources mentioned. Thank you very much.